The father kept pleading with his son not to eat the ice cream. The son didn't care and said, Why don't you be a good boy? He took a bite of the ice cream and said, You shouldn't have grounded me. The father doesn't get a chance to answer because he's already a puddle of ice cream. It was this ice cream truck that started it all. Every night, it would start selling ice cream and screaming at the top of its lungs. What's even weirder is that kids would run uncontrollably to the ice cream with coins. Mike was concerned about the children's whereabouts when he learned that strange things had been happening in town lately. He was afraid that one day he would turn into a puddle of ice cream. The other day, his daughter said she had a nightmare where she heard an ice cream truck and then she couldn't help herself from going to buy it. Mike remembered that his best friends were all dying at the same time and he started to panic. He suddenly remembered what happened 20 years ago. They were just kids trying to get attention. A bunch of wild kids waiting for the clown to sell ice cream every day. He was born with a birth defect and had to wear a fake nose to sell ice cream as the clown. He's so innocent. He gives away free ice cream when he sees a cute kid. He entertained the kids with his acrobatics. But even so, there were still people who didn't like him. Nick took a drag on his cigarette and walked up to the clown and spit in his face. The clown patiently taught the kids that it was wrong to do that. Nick doesn't listen and pulls off his fake nose, but he suddenly screams and falls to the ground and even pees his pants. Nick was so humiliated that he got up and punched Mike in the face. What's the connection between these two things? The best is yet to come. This little boy takes a bite of ice cream, then his father went into convulsions, and an unknown liquid came out of his mouth, and then he turned into a puddle of liquid. That day, Mike's son was walking out the door uncontrollably. Mike rushed to stop him, but his son was staring straight into the distance and kept saying, Eat the best ice cream in the world. When Mike got to the door, he realized his daughter was heading out of the house too. So he asked his wife to take care of his son, and then he rushed to get his daughter back. He watched the ice cream truck coming slowly. The truck finally backed up in a weird fog. He knew that if it wasn't for that incident, none of this would have happened. The clown was doing tricks to entertain the kids. Nick, on the sidelines, had another bad idea. He wanted to regain the face he'd lost last time. So he had one of the kids ask the clown for change. And then he pushed him over. While the clown was picking up the money, Nick threatened Mike to put down the handbrake or he'd hit him. The car then slowly backed up. The clown didn't realize there was danger behind him and just focused on the money. Soon the truck ran over him and his fist clenched around a few coins unclenched. After the clown died, Nick blamed Mike. Everyone thought Mike had killed the man. So Mike, when he grew up, thought that this incident was the return of the clown's ghost and that the clown had given the kids ice cream to get revenge. The clown was so angry about this that he went to Nick to settle the score. Nick says he saw the clown give the kids the ice cream. And when the kids ate it, their real dad turned into a puddle of ice cream. Nick also said that since I don't have kids, these horrible things don't happen to me. Maybe that's a lucky moment for a single person. He's still giggling and laughing, and he's never going to think that he's going to be next. Mike hears a call for ice cream. The little girl handed the clown a quarter. The clown says, we don't owe each other anything. While the little girl took a bite of the ice cream, the man in the bathtub is uncomfortable and tries to get Mike to pull him up. But his arm quickly turns into a thick liquid. Then his body starts to turn into a puddle of melted ice cream. He's just glad he doesn't have kids, but then he's like this. That's why we shouldn't talk too much, or we might get an unexpected retaliation. Mike couldn't sleep a wink at this scene. He went to his only remaining friend in the neighborhood and asked him if his kid hated him and if he wanted to kill him. But he says he'd just beat the kid up, so he's not going to kill him. Mike says he saw Nick turn into a puddle of ice cream, so he told him to keep an eye on his kid. But his friend didn't believe him. Night began to fall. Mike told his wife to send the kids away for safety. He's going to stay and fight the clown alone. First he tested the plumbing in the house to see if it worked. Then he got out the ice cream, which he planned to use to subdue the clown. What he doesn't know is that his best friend has been killed and he's all alone. Mike also didn't know that his dutiful son had gotten out of the car. It seems he doesn't want his father to live. The clown hands Mike an ice cream and says, For the love of your conscience, you're on your own. Five seconds later, two kids show up behind him and try to grab the ice cream. He can't stop them. He turns on the streetlights and the hose. At this point, the clown's body is frouncing. Mike grabbed an axe and tried to chop at the clown. The clown starts talking about pleading for mercy. I thought that was the end of their feud, but Mike didn't hesitate to swing the axe at the clown again. This time, the clown immediately grabbed the axe and pushed Mike away. What kind of ice 
The two kids start to fight for the ice cream, and it looks like they want to send their dad away. Mike picks up a water gun and keeps shooting at the clown. Then the clown starts to freeze. The boy picks up the ice cream on the ground and realizes it's in the shape of the clown. It turns out that the clown has also made himself an ice cream. As the boy bites into the ice cream, the clown starts to melt until it finally turns into a puddle of ice cream too. The story ends here. Mike and his family lived a peaceful life ever since. This drama teaches us not to be careless in eating out and that we should always think about the consequences of our actions and take responsibility for them. Every bit of karma we eliminate is a bit of wisdom we gain.